Hey everyone, Psychoriasin here, and in this lesson I'm going to teach you how to get smooth shading uh, using traditional media. Now, I think the biggest problem is when people start out, first of all they're just using usually cheap paper, like copy paper, and that's not bad, um, and, and like just a cheap pencil. It's not bad, but it's got to be used in a very specific way. So here I just have copy paper, and I think the biggest problem is, okay, let's say you're a beginner, you want to draw something. Um, let's say you've drawn this face, right? And you want to shade it. Well, the first thing is this type of drawing, like when you're drawing kind of the same way you're writing. Um, it's not terrible, I don't, it's because I use it too, but it's got a time and a place. Um, I tend to use this type of drawing when I'm focusing on details or if I want really dark lines because this is really good for getting very heavy shading, very dark. Um, now, if you want smooth shading though, you don't want to press it like this. And the reason is when you press it down, you might have seen this if you use HB pencils or something like that. You, when you press really hard, you get... Um, like it digs into the paper and then it becomes glossy, like it gets this glare on it, the shine that you don't really want. And the thing is that all the pencils that, that uh, are out there, like HBs, Bs, whatever, um, right here I just have a bunch of them, these aren't good pencils, they're just pencils I found lying around, it's like okay, let me use these. Like, okay, so yeah, you have like uh, HB here, and what's this, a 4B? and whatever, other other bees. Um, they all have a natural range to them. Um, and if you want to know like how to sharpen like this, uh, I've got a few vi uh, videos, like I think two or three on traditional drawing techniques that show, you know, how to sharpen pencils and stuff. So I will put those in the description. Um, but anyway, they all have this natural comfortable zone. And the point is, you're supposed to be able to shade with them very lightly, and that's their limit. So for instance, this one, this is its comfortable zone. This is how the pencil is supposed to be used, like, maybe this dark, and what is this? This is a 2B. And then if, instead of pressing harder, the way you get it darker is just going over that more and more. And what you'll notice is, there are little gaps in the page. Uh, I don't know if it's going to focus on that, but you might see like little white spaces in between. See, with the texture of the paper. Um, the way you get rid of that, it's very uh, monotonous, but what you do is you actually take your pencil and you dip it into those little cracks because what they are is if we zoomed like let's say this is a side view of a paper or whatever maybe a three-quarter view right and you zoomed in super close to like this area right what you would see so I'm gonna zoom in here what you would see is that this paper it's not straight it's not flat like this it actually has texture to it like that and you have all these bumps. So these are called the hills, and these are called the troughs or the valleys. And like the, the entire paper, it's an uneven. So when you shade, what you're doing, if you shade lightly like this, which is recommended, is you are just shading the tips of these hills. You're putting graphite on the tips of these, and you've got spaces here where it's not filling in. But when you press really hard, what you're doing is you're just taking these hills and you're squashing them down. like So it just becomes like that. And that's why it gets shiny. Because when you have a surface that's like this, it's very smooth, it reflects. Like that's why glass is reflective, because it's very smooth. And that's why paper isn't. That's why when you look in paper, you don't see a reflection of yourself because it's bumpy. Like the texture of paper like this, it's bumpy. Uh, but it looks it looks very flat, but it's not as flat as it looks. So you don't want to damage your paper. So you don't want to press so deep that you're actually destroying the paper and taking these hills and valleys like that and just squashing them like that because that's going to give you the shine. So that's bad. 
You don't want that. Um, so what you do is, yeah, you shade this, like you hit these hills, and then you tilt your, paper, uh, your, your pencil to fill in these gaps. So here I have this shading, then I actually have to go into small areas and like tap them in. And that's how I'll get like very, very even shading. But it all depends on the light touch that I have. Because if I'm like this, right, I'm using it as a writing tool and I'm trying to get shading that's this smooth, it's gonna be really hard. Like, the most I can do is something like this, right? So you can see the difference, like this compared to this, right? And so, okay. So how do we get a light touch? Well, the easiest way is to hold your pencil further back. See, if I hold it really close like this, I get this. But if I hold it, even as a writing tool, way back here, I can't, I can't, like, I cannot get that hard line. So, okay, fine. So here's the first thing, let's hold it far back. But if you hold it like a writing tool, you'll see something that's happening, just wobbling and it's, you lose all accuracy. So when you hold it like this, see, in, instead of this, where it's not really supported, if you hold it like this, now, or, or like this, you've got a lot more support, see, because my entire finger is like touching this, it's grabbing onto this. It's like a poker. I can poke people with it. Um, and so when I shade, uh, that's the first thing, is hold it back and then use the flat or area of this lead, right? Not like this, but like this. Ah! And you get much softer shading. And so I guess this is how I'm doing it. So I've got a finger, a thumb here, and finger, and then underneath I'm using this. And I'm using this pinky to rest on the page so that I can have like stability. And actually, you know, I just take it off. But yeah, see, that way you can get much smoother shading. And what I was taught to do, and this was really, really boring, but it was helpful, is uh, I had like a big piece of paper and I was given like a 2B pencil and I had to shade the entire paper and make it all smooth. And yeah, it took, I don't know, maybe an hour. Um, because the thing is, let's say I, I want to make a smooth tone. If I keep going over that tone, it's going to get darker. And you don't want that. You want it to be the initial smooth light tone. Um, so that just takes practice. And making it so it's entirely smooth. If you do this to an entire page, you will get better at this. You'll be able to create smooth uh, tone. See, this is probably hard to see. Um, this is a charcoal pencil, so let's see. It's a lot easier with this to, you can probably see this a lot easier, but you're picking up the grain of the page. Um, so that's the second thing. The first thing is this, you know, uh, develop a light touch by switching the way you hold the pencil. Another way is you don't have to hold it far back. That's one way. The other way is to actually hold it close up, but you pinch, like, see the wood? You pinch it like so. And see, I'm still do, I'm holding it like this. Ooh. So what I can do now is get very light movements, but I also have a lot of control. I can go hard or I can go light. So again, this is something you have to practice. And it takes, like I think it took me about a week of practicing, but after you do this, after you, um, practice, you know, holding the pencil and getting smooth tones, you can like shade pretty nicely and also using a lot of your arm and, and not like small finger. Because if I use small finger motions, again, it's going to look like this. It's going to get a lot darker, um, but I don't have the ability to, you know, lighten up. But this isn't bad either. Like even this, it's like, fine. Okay, at least the tones are very smooth. See? It's a nice smooth gradient. Um, that I can do with this and it also sounds nice uh, something else like uh, I don't know if you notice this but when you watch people who are using a tool very well it looks easy right you want it to look easy um, the thing is it doesn't you don't have to spend like years and years and years of 
just doing something to get that easy. What you could do is just spend a small amount of time, but be really focused. Like I am just gonna practice shading for an entire day until I can get really smooth tones. Um, so that's something. The other thing is when you shade back and forth like this, which is what I'm, I'm sort of doing it, but not really. Cause what I'm actually doing is I'm, okay. So when I say back and forth, it's sort of like zigzagging, right? Like this. You don't want to shade like this, and the reason is, see here, at each one of these points, it gets a lot uh, darker, because you're going like this line, and then this line, and this line. And so, when you shade like this, it's a lot harder to get smooth strokes, because you end up, I mean, you can practice your way out of it, which I have, um, but the way to practice your way out of it is to, instead of doing this back and forth, like this, like zigzags, zigzags, you're doing this. Like big circles, but only on the circle part. I mean, the lower part does it hit. Almost like, I don't know, yeah, I guess you can imagine like a plane and it's coming in for a landing like and then it hits the runway and then it takes off again. Like that. So that's how you want to do it. Now, once you practice this enough, then when you start even doing this back and forth thing, what you end up doing is you, like, because what I'm doing, I'm trying to think, what am I doing? I'm taking the pencil, but I'm actually putting less pressure as I touch the page, and then I go more heavy, and then I relax, and then I do that again. So I'm actually doing that um, touchdown thing, just in a very, very minimal way. Okay, so that's the first thing, you know? Get your light touch, you can hold it close, like this, like pinch it. Um, and even if you hold it as a writing tool, once you get better at this, it'll be fine, you know? You can, it'll be darker, um, but you'll at least learn control that you don't make bad lines. And this isn't just for shading, like lines themselves, they look, nicer when you use big arm movements. And if you're new to drawing, also scribble a lot. Like take an entire page and scribble and play with your things. Um, so yeah, hold it back. And then if you want to fill in gaps, you can manually go in and lightly fill in things. You want this light touch though, even with a tablet. Cause um, I saw people using a tablet and, and here's a tablet pen. Well, it's a Cintiq pen, but it's the uh, same as a tablet pen. And the thing is, if you don't have a light touch, what happens is you have to do things like adjusting the opacity. And that to me feels like less control. I don't like to, like I work at 100% opacity, but I just hold the pen so that I make very light marks. And that gives me all the opacity control that I want. And again, it's a week, it's a week of practicing. Cause this is something I keep running into is just trying to explain these things like, Hey, you should do this. And yeah, you should hold your pencil further back. And people kind of nod and like, yeah, uh, yeah, I should do that. Um, but then they kind of don't. And it's like, ah, and then they'll ask me, Oh yeah, your lines are so smooth. How'd you get smooth lines? I told you how to get smooth lines. <laughs> Just like practice, practice this stuff. Um, and then after it's your choice, cause I get also comments of people saying, oh, you need to improve your line work. It's like, no, it's not that. It's that I'm choosing to do sketchy lines for a reason. Like when I sketch now, um, well, I use mechanical pencils. No, I actually use a pen, but I'll do like these kind of things where I'm using very sketchy lines, but actually, if you break the line down, it's still very, like individually, they're very straight, but I'm just doing this because I'm trying to feel out forms. Um, now, in terms of like, oh, so practice your line work. It's like, I can create very smooth lines. It's not like, that's not a problem. It's not the smoothness. It's more, once you have it, you can screw around with it. So I'm kind of, worried that people might see me doing these kind of sketchy things and thinking like, well, okay, I don't need um, to practice using my arm and stuff because it's like, well, you can get just sketchy lines easily. Um, but anyway, the other thing is your tool, like that might be holding you back if you want to get smooth stuff. So you've seen, this is copy paper, right? 
I can get pretty smooth lines. So I made this thing and it's got copy paper and sketch paper. And uh, again, in the description of this video, I'll include exactly what paper I'm using. It's not that important, but fine. Uh, I mean, it's not that important as in, I'm, clearly it's important. I'm showing you the paper, but it's not as important in terms of uh, which brand of copy paper do I use? So copy paper um, is just printer paper. You know, it, you can call it copy paper, you can call it printer paper, you can call it, uh, I don't know, just the regular paper. Uh, sketch paper, it's got a bit more tooth. Bristol is super smooth and craft paper is toned paper. So I'm gonna just show the difference with a, this is, what is this, a 2B pencil uh, on each one of them. So I'm just gonna shade using, again, the same shading method. And that's what it looks like with copy paper. So there's not much tooth on it. Um, and you get quite a bit of inconsistency. Um, but it's okay. I mean, it's not bad to use copy paper. But now let's look at sketch paper. So again, I'm not changing the tool. Just using a different kind of paper. And this has a lot more tooth to it. It's a lot heavier. Um, but you can see, like... It also looks a lot smoother. To me, anyway, it looks a lot smoother when I'm using the sketch paper. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that shows up. Okay, so now let's use Bristol. Um, now Bristol, this is something interesting because it's so smooth. First of all, it's very easy to get smoother tones. Uh, second of all, I'm using a 2B, but it seems a lot darker on Bristol, like I'm having to use a lot less pressure. Um, but it gets darker. So with Bristol, like an H pencil shows up darker on Bristol than it does on any of these other ones. Uh, so yeah, this is what Bristol is like. And then this is what craft paper is like. And craft paper is, uh, it's really nice. It's very, it's very much similar to sketch paper. Um, but yeah, again, it's very easy to get a smooth tone. Um, where craft paper really shines is when you've got something like this. Uh, this is a Uni Posca thing and you shake it. And then you can draw with it. See, on copy paper, it looks like this. Not that impressive. Sketch paper, Bristol. But craft paper, it's like, whoa, cool. White shows up and so I've got extra values. So that's cool. Um, and lines too. I'm going to use a mechanical pencil because this is another thing, you know, some people like to use mechanical pencils and I'm one of them. And it's like, well, I use a mechanical pencil so I can't get, you know, smooth shading like that because see, it's, it's such a small thin point. I, I don't have the flat side of the paper well, or, or the lead. It's like, well, what you can do is just take out more of the lead and then you can use it as a flat thing. But another thing is, when you practice this light touch thing, and, and animators talk about this too, where they use their pencil and they hold it so lightly and gently that uh, often the pencil just falls out of your hand. And it's really annoying when it does. See, see how light, just, just like a, a feather, like you're, I, I think of it, especially on tablets, like I'm ice skating and I want to practice so that I can actually see the line it's leaving. See, you're just touching it. I'm assuming you can hear this, but anyway. See, you want to get that? You can do the same thing with a mechanical pencil. Oh, and the reason why it sucks is because when you drop a pencil, um, often what happens is inside the lead it breaks. So then every time you sharpen it, it keeps breaking. Um, so if you've had a problem where, um, cause sometimes I've heard people say, oh, my pencil sucks. And it might not be your pencil that sucks. It might be that you dropped it or the pencil dropped at some point, And so the lead keeps breaking inside, or it might be that your pencil sucks. So <laughs> one of two things anyway. So even with a mechanical pencil and even without using, well, okay. So first I'm going to use the flatter part. I still can get smooth shading. See? And this is printer paper. It's not 
it's not something like, oh, because I'm using a mechanical pencil, therefore um, there's no way to get smooth shading. No, you just need a very light touch. And um, on sketch paper, I mean, I actually like it for shading. Um, I've heard some people say you can't shade with them well, but it's like, no, you, you really can. You just have to, you know, have a very light touch and Bristol. No, I don't like working on Bristol too much because it's too smooth for my taste. And if you've seen my pointy chin episode, you know, you know how I feel about Bristol. Um, so this is harder, like definitely it's harder to shade with a mechanical pencil on Bristol for me. Um, but that could just be because I don't have enough practice again. So there's that and then craft paper. Oops. I guess this one's the most friendly for mechanical pencils, which is good because that's what I use it for. I tend to use sketch paper, I prefer it. Um, and it's not as expensive. I think Bristol, or no, I think craft paper is the most expensive and then Bristol and then, unless, I mean, it depends if you use cardstock, I suppose. It doesn't matter as much. Um, but yeah, so mechanical pencils, it's no excuse for, for um, not smooth shading. And even if you use the tip, if you um, use these kinds of motions where you're using that airplane touchdown thing, you still can get decent shading. And finally, I'm going to use a pen to show you the power of a light touch. So with a pen, right? It's like there is no way to shade with pen. Well, yeah, I mean, cross hatching though, you could do this, right? Go this way and then go this way. But actually, if you're really light, there is a difference. Um, so, I don't know, let me try with copy paper. See, if I'm really light, there's no mark, but then I can get a difference, see? I mean, it looks kind of ugly, but you can draw lighter here too. It's like, just by holding it further back and using um, very diagonal, like I'm not doing this, I'm doing this, you still can get lighter lines. And I use that when I'm sketching, um, so I use it on sketch paper, right? And you, if you've seen my other videos, you might have seen that. But yeah, I'll do things like this where it's like, okay, so here's a circle. Well, I'm using a pen and I'm able to build up. And I think if you use a ballpoint pen, it should be even easier. And then as I want it to get darker, like let's say the bottom of this circle, want it to get darker, then I can do that. I can just, you know, use it more like a pen again. But see, I've got tonal difference. And the reason it's doing that is because it's the same as this other thing. You've got the, the surface of the page with its hills and valleys, and you're just touching the, the hills, the top of the peaks of this. So that's that. And with Bristol, no, with Bristol it's much harder to get um, the light tone. Because when it's really light, it doesn't show up, and there's less hills and valleys. Like, Bristol is smoother. so. If copy paper is like this, then sketch paper might be more like that, and Bristol might be more like that, and craft paper is again more like that. So there's more hills and here for the pen to touch and more valleys for it not to touch, because that's really all that's happening. It's that there's more white space in between this, so it appears to be lighter. So with Bristol, it's a bit harder, but as long as I use arm movements that are distant, far apart, um, and it also helps for cross-hatching, uh, then it's not, you know, impossible to get even some value difference with pen and with craft it should be. And it's pretty easy to get some value changes. Like, compare that, and then if I want to go cross-hatchy, I can do that, and I can do this. And that's how you create smooth tones with pen anyway. You can just cross hatch. Um, but to begin with, I just like to hold it really far back 
and I'm very loose with it, just woo, like that. So, pretty much that's it. I really hope you practice. I really hope you do because um, there's huge advantages to this, you know? Being able to just smoothly shade and having, you know, more control and then easing up, it's very useful. Um, and also, I, I pressed a bit too hard here. So you don't want to press too hard because then, especially with Bristol, you will get um, glare. Let's see if I can make some glare. Oh, and another thing I wanted to quickly cover is because of this, the properties of these papers, right? This one's smoother. This one's a bit rougher, a bit rougher, much rougher. Um, you want to use certain tools like charcoal pencil on Bristol. It's okay, but it's not great. It's like, eh. I, I don't like the effect you get. I mean, do you see it? Close. Uh, let's see if I can get some glare, a little bit of glare. But anyway, you can see it, it's like, eh, it's okay, it's not great. On copy paper, again, it's okay, but it's not great. Because these papers aren't friendly to this tool. Um, but this paper, oh, and I'm also spinning my thing as I shade. This paper, the sketch paper, it's better. And then the craft paper, it's very comfortable, very at home in this environment. Um, so, Generally, the tool is the softer the lead, because this, this charcoal is soft. Um, B pencils are soft. This is Conte. Uh, this is soft. Conte is super soft. Um, and, and, and then the more B pencil you get, the softer it is. Um, the more B you get, the more soft you want your paper to be. The more rough it can be. And the more H you get, the smoother the, the lead is, the harder the lead is, uh, the harder and smoother the paper would be. So um, this is great for the H family. This is great for the B family. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, um, hope you try this out and hope it helps. And thanks for watching.